<clears throat> What's up? Hello everyone. So I just went to the mountain that, uh, so what, that, that guy just coughed past me again. And this video is called no God in gangs talking question mark like not assertively but questioningly <sighs> I suspect not because uh, it always seems like a bit of a shit show so to speak in old terminology pardon my Australian <laughs> But it always seems... Oh Jesus, there's that fluoro again. I've never had a day more in my life that I've seen fluoro than today, oh my God. Three red, so I'm getting red now, I'm starting to get red, am I? <laughs> um, this morning there was also three red cars, ridiculous on that other street, on the video Glitch Gang Stalking, where I was talking about how there may not be, and I suspect, and this is the theory, no more higher energy entering the family of dark. So what you have is residual physical world uh, monuments and um, relics there was another word that I was trying to think of like a specimen uh, we'll go with relics for now <clears throat> sorry there was another uh, word that I was trying to conjure up there hopefully I'll remember it at some point but yeah you know the higher energy we're not talking about just you know the family of dark has no more energy coming into it and then, you know, that changing the code is all up to us now uh, and, and that sort of thing that I was saying this morning, but I thought people might not understand that because I'll say, because, you know, soon we'll have free energy devices and stuff when we have to revolt when the whole world is going to end up like fucking Venezuela soon. And, you know, it'll lead to a free energy revolution, obviously, free energy devices like solar. Obviously, that could be just put everywhere. But, um, you know, more complex free energy devices as well. Um, yeah, so, you know, I meant high energy. This high light, this luminous, new nominous, not phenomenous light that we see. And this phenomenous photonic light is not what I'm talking about when I say no more energy entering the family of dark and the shit show that is gang stalking. So that's what I meant this morning, just to really clarify it for everyone, you know, because people have trouble understanding what I say, I think, sometimes. I'm sorry. Um, you know, it is as complex as it is, and it's difficult to articulate sometimes. I think a lot of you appreciate that sometimes I can have a, a decent go at that, and here we are. So anyway, uh, let's get to this actual video. This is, you know, kind of leading into this a little. What a day. So weird. Every video, got to have the noise campaign on Philosopher's Stone Tube when he was about to get into the important point like every freaking time. <laughs> um, so... I was about to say, you know, the mountain behind Oro, that town half an hour south, 45 minutes south of me now, where Oro escaped back to his mountain paradise, you know, I went past there and I, I could have got off the bus, but I didn't. 
and I thought, am I even going to find him up there? Because I think he called me, you know, like two weeks ago, and I, I think he would like some food because it's been like two months since I've even been there. Long time even for a cat, you know, two months without food. However, you know, he can eat uh, insects and has pure water running. He could beg tourists, he can take from the big skip bins, and he's right next to that camping that we stayed at, remember? And a lot of people will be there every summer with like spare food. So I mean, he's in the absolute best place he could be. And then I'm on the bus regretting it, and then I look at the mountain behind it, how could I forget? But it's got a giant cross on it. Um, like, you know, a huge cross, like the Brazilian statue of uh, Jesus, kind of like that, like a huge, huge uh, brick or whatever, a concrete uh, cross. And it's on the mountain, the huge mountain, which is even bigger behind Oro's mountain there, where that camping ground was, where we stayed, and he bailed back to. Now, I was thinking, you know, he went, hold on, we're getting somewhere with this, don't worry. Um, I was thinking... Because this is, you know, what I, what got me into thinking this video title. I was thinking, um, you know, he, you know, as I was coming over the hill to this place, you know, the city environment, I was like, you know, this is more me right now. The energy is perfect for me right now. Uh, like, you know, I spent years in nature and stuff, right? You all see me in the camping ground and everything. But I'm wasted from that, and, and like I'm tired of it, right? I need to get back into like this artificial life, which is easier. Oh, well, it sounds horrible, doesn't it? But you're all already doing it. You see, I just have a massive perspective of it because I was, you know, living in nature more. But anyway, so the cross on the mountain just made me think, well, he's in his perfect place. Like I just explained, he can even beg tourists for food, maybe one... One person will climb the mountain and take him home. Who knows, right? And he was chasing a girl cat. I know it was his little, his little voice that I heard chasing the, the girl cat that came up to where I was putting the food every afternoon. So look, he's got everything he needs. He's even got the girl cats to chase. That's possibly why I had to get him there. It's just perfect, right? I found him at that camping. He, he came in mysteriously and he's left just as mysteriously. You know, I asked for that. I asked for Oro, but indirectly I said one day in the camping, you know, I was like, man, I really need like a little Chinese woman to walk on me. And then I was thinking, no, oh, a little cat would be great. And what did Oro always do? He massaged me like really well. And he'd give electric shocks on the nervous system and he fixed my, my bad ley line on the left side of my body, along with... Uh, entire trees of zi shi that I made for myself, sour orange peel made into tincture, Chinese recipe, along with cocaine, which excites the little uh, joint uh, bacteria colonies to just melt. That's why your nose runs like crazy. So I'd have, you know, up to two grams of that to clear that out a whole night on it. And I'd do midnight yoga and other, th you know, other things. But, um, yeah, back to the story, you know, um, you know, this, this whole thing showed me, you know, like, uh, you know, that's not gang stalking, it was all perfect, but gang stalking is always like, you know, imperfect, right, and, and annoying, right, but when I went past that mountain, I had the highest vibration feeling, I was like, yeah, what, how, how could I forget, you know, he's on a mountain that's aligned with another mountain, that has a giant cross. And remember, Oro's mountain itself has a giant cat statue. I mean, that's not everywhere. It's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's only that mountain. And there's not many mountains in Uruguay. Do you understand? Like, this is the mountainous region where I am. So that, and he has, like, mountain cat energy. He's always been, like, just, you know, very, very epitome of cat tiger energy. You've all seen the videos and how he walks, and, and you can just tell, like, if, if you hang out with Oro, you know that he's got, like, an epitome of cat energy. He's a self-spirited cat and everything. And then, you know, that mountain has a giant cat statue, and behind it is a giant cross on the mountain behind it, even bigger. So, I mean, how, how many signals does one need? So, gang stalking's annoying, right? That shit is always annoying. Gang stalking is always annoying, that's one way you know, because it's about bringing down vibration, 
right? Even how they try and destitute you and so on. But I mean, just in general, that's why you get the noise campaigns and so on. It's a frequency war of the inside and the outside, right? The higher light and the lower. Like, I, you know, that's why I wanted to make this video. But the point is, you know, the, the whole thing about uh, the question mark, is God in gang stalking? Or is it just full on, you know, like Satan or whatever, right? The, the bad God, the, the AI of the Matrix or whatever, right? Uh, like, we don't know. But uh, they have his face written all over them when they're angry and wrathful. They have the mammon greed of thinking they can capture you, right? They have the, the Luciferian mental pride to think they're better than you, right? And so on and so forth. So what's interesting, I think, about that is um, it's all a shit show, right? And if you're in, like, the light of God, so to speak, kind of thing, it's always smooth, you know what I mean? So there's a discernible difference in gang stalking and what you might call God stalking. <laughs> because, you know, with Oro, it, it was hard to let him go up the mountain and stuff, but when I look at it, the situation was all smooth. It was completely smooth. There was surrounding residual, you know, gang stalking, but the actual situation of it all was very smooth. All I had to do was call the people that lived down the road. Somehow I met people that lived down the road who were called fleeches or moving people. Like, you know, he had a little truck and, he, and you know, it was very difficult to get Oro in the car. It was like a car like this we got him into and it was very difficult to get Oro in the car, you know, very difficult. And yeah, basically, you know, one day we, we turned up at that camping ground an hour north and there he is on his mountain. Everything was really smooth though, surprisingly. You know, it, as difficult as it is to get Oro in the car, that wasn't, you know, it didn't, it wasn't really difficult, you know what I mean? I just had to kind of wrestle him in there, in my hands. So it's not like, you know, I had to chase him around or anything because I had a good grip on him. But you know what I mean? Like, the process itself was very smooth. The whole thing, as a whole, every little step, basically. And he even ran away, I mean, when he broke his collar and jumped out my arms that night, I looked back and I just thank him that he even did that. It was a right decision. He's a good boy. <clears throat> it breaks my heart, but he done the right thing, you see. So it's not about, you know, what my emotions are, are on the subject. That's almost irrelevant. You know, it's the, there's that higher logic playing out, and that's what I'm talking about, that smoothness. And I don't see that in gang stalking. I see, like, a, a, a retarded sort of, like, orchestration, and a too obvious orchestration, like, when God's at work, it seems very sly, and the other way is brute force, and gang stalking seems to be, like, full-on brute force. Right? There's two types of attack. There's the sly and the brute force attack. Right? Same thing with information technology. I keep telling you guys we're in a machine. This universe is a machine. And you learn information technology programming like I did at university for four years. I've done programming specifically for four years. Yeah, And you, you see the, the, uh, the similar and simulacrum and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you see that you see the the similar sort of nature it's the police there but um you, you see like how it's similar and stuff right and anyway the smoothness of god stalking I, I don't see it in gang stalking there's there's a like they try to do that but they they kind of like fuck it up all the time right like they're not really thinking about what they're doing at a deeper level, like they, they'll use intimidation. Intimidation's ridiculous, because in their own system, they're not allowed to, you know, like physically handle you anyway. You know what I mean? So it's just ridiculous. I'm not talking about police, obviously they can, right? They've got that there. But you see what I mean, right? There's that, that like retarded ill 